uh, coming back to what we discussed the first day and the importance of um, demystified power and demystified politics, I said, I am a politician, and I proudly said, I am a politician because I truly believe that there are other ways of doing politics. There are former MPs here, people that are very knowledgeable and that have been in government positions. Uh, demystified power, resignified politics, I think that's uh, a very important when you're trying to, to see a better world, a better future for future generations, but a profound policy changes that what's, uh, what uh, WFC uh, stands for. Uh, when I said um, demystified power, because a power doesn't have anything to do with government. Power it has a lot of porosity. It's, it's a very complex uh, word, but uh, I think that we need to exercise power, uh, power to, to transform every space at every scale, uh, in school, at work, in the forest, in the seaside, in parliament, in government, everywhere. So power is just about uh, having uh, the will and the commitment and vision to, to be a better world, to make a difference. And when I also mention the need for um, uh, resignifying, dignifying uh, politics, uh, I think it's very important to, to work towards uh, that as well because uh, it, it's not only uh, a person like me, you know, from a very tiny, small country. I think there is a global trend of, of understanding politics as a means and, of, and a privilege to serve. And uh, uh, to serve, uh, to listen, uh, and, uh, and to really uh, work towards people's power. And uh, when I heard the first day, so many, I think Rafia, uh, saying that we need to question uh, current democracy, and that it's not enough to vote because sometimes we take the wrong decisions, uh, to double check. I think one of the, the main challenges is to double check representation and who we uh, indeed represent. A politician that represents the voice of who? the voice of corporations, the voice of the powerful, or the voice or, of the voiceless, of the refugees. Uh, and, and I think that one of the words that I saw on WFC's uh, mission uh, was the, the word ethics. And, and I think that's, that's at the core of what uh, uh, women in positions to, to make changes uh, and contribute to the transformation of society should, should stand for. Um, are we politicians to serve status quo or are we politicians with a transformational force uh, in society? And perhaps another issue and a, another way to pay tribute to the women that came just before us, and that's the reason I think that we are all <laughs> we're all here uh, with you this afternoon, is, is perhaps uh, something that I have repeated myself several times, and it's to avoid uh, the, the essentialist view of, of women. Uh, essential view because sometimes we, we, we tend to think that women are naturally a, 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 a more democratic, more horizontal, uh, that we are more sensitive to understand uh, the suffering of the world. Uh, we are better to exercise power in a different way. And it is not always the case. And by that, I mean we, we need to work on, on shared consciousness, on, on deliberate consciousness, and how to do it, uh, how to do better and more. Uh, to be the better future, uh, and what are the values that we stand for? What is the voice we want to have? Uh, 
how do we want to make the difference? It doesn't happen naturally, that's what I mean. Um, in how to come up with new narratives, with new scripts on the issues that would allow us to, to narrow the gap between the desirable and the possible, and what we are actually able to do. Um, in, since we have you know, a very a fixed amount of words that we can say, I think I will simply end sharing with you uh, a part of, of what I am. I said a poet, and, and perhaps I will share with you a couple of my poems of, of my last book, uh, which is called um, <coughs> Tortured, Tortured Geographies. Unfortunately, it's not translated into other languages. It's only in Spanish. Uh, but it's called Tortured Geographies. And it's a collection of, of, I would call them poetic postcards of different places that I have been in the past few years. And um, it was funny because I, I I, I don't have my, my books with me, but I extracted these from from the web and uh, looking at, at the web and I just I couldn't print them and so I, I asked Alistair to help me print and I don't know for some reason I don't know if you did that but the, the poems appear to be in English. <laughs> it, it, I don't know what happened but the, there is a I don't know if you have a program in your computer or something but the, it's it has sort of translated automatically into English. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's funny because, uh, well, of, of course, I'm, I, it's impossible for me to write poetry in, in English, but I'll try and, and just test uh, just reading the Spanish version and then this uh, machine translated version of the English. <laughs> so you will apologize, it's just, uh, uh, just uh, one or two uh, poems. But um, I would like to, to start with, a, with a, an uh, epigraph, we call it in, in Spanish, uh, from a poet that I love. Uh, his name is Edouard Lisson. He's uh, from La Martinique. Um, and uh, the epigraph says uh, in, in French, it's a combination of languages, uh, it says, Dire le paysage, compter l'histoire, et écrire en présence de toutes les langues du monde sont quelques-unes des fonctions de la poésie. And then I will use your translation, Alistair, that says, say the landscape, tell the story, and write in the presence of all the world's languages are some of the functions of poetry. That's what what's, uh, Edouard Lisson said. And uh, this poem is called El Pez Dorado de Arizona. Um, the uh, goldfish of Arizona, and I'll read it in its original uh, language. En agua prieta, desierto de Arizona, vive el pez dorado. Tiene una memoria que dura tres segundos. Vive solo en el presente, nada sin parar. Reinventa todo a cada instante, pero no llega a ninguna parte, porque su camino es siempre otro. El pez dorado olvida su nombre, olvida el amor, olvida su propósito, sus hijos, sus padres. Es como la historia escrita por los poderosos. Está hecha con una memoria de apenas tres segundos, para que nadie recuerde la guerra o la noche. La historia que guarda el pez dorado es como la nuestra, dura apenas tres segundos. Nuestros dolores se repiten y parecen nuevos cada vez. And now the English machine translation. So you apologies. Well, as I mentioned, it's uh, the golden fish from Arizona. In Agua Prieta, Arizona desert, live the goldfish. It has a memory that lasts three seconds. It lives only in the presence, in the present swings non-stop, reinvents everything at every moment, but it doesn't get anywhere because its way is always a different one. Goldfish forgets its name, forgets love, forgets its purpose, its children, 
its parents. It's like the story written by the powerful. It is made with a memory of just three seconds, so that no one remembers the war or night. The story that keeps goldfish is like ours. It lasts only three seconds. Our sorrows are repeated and look new every time. And just to end, perhaps I, I would uh, read another poem that I would like to dedicate to Ana Maria because uh, it's a, a poem called Geography Class, uh, and it, it was written uh, in homage of Juchitán uh, in Mexico. <coughs> Clase de Geografía. Juchitán, pueblo de México, limita al sur con el cactus y al este con ningún pueblo que se le parezca. Las mujeres de Juchitán han vivido eternamente movidas por el viento. De ahí sus mantillas, sus mantillas ceñidas para no perder la conciencia. Son pescadoras que siembran camarones, que siembran hijos, venden y compran, cuentan monedas, se sientan en la plaza a contemplar la velocidad, a poner las trenzas al sol. Ellos cuidan de la casa, hacen fuego, iguana asada, maíz. Les llaman mushes. Son hombres vestidos de mujer, pero de otro modo. Trenzas postizas, collones repletos de almidón para esconder sus escuálidas caderas. Juchitán es el mundo al revés, como debe ser. Thank you. Gracias. It's a great privilege in the World Future Council's AGM to make space for a session on women co-creating a world that works for future generations in association with Rising Women, Rising World. Now, this organization was established three and a half years ago as a growing, vibrant community of women on all continents who take responsibility for building a world that works for everyone and for all of nature. So, totally aligned with the World Future Council. Uh, and formed by two councillors, Ramamani, myself, and Jean Houston, who will be well known to many of you in the United States. And our work is based on rebalancing the deep feminine values with the masculine values that have dominated our culture for 2,000 years in the West. And we see those deep feminine values as such as receptivity, compassion, Ubuntu, which we're all familiar with, I think, namely uh, what uh, Desmond Tutu describes as I am because you are, namely interdependence, intuition, and being a voice for the earth. Now, we're not talking about gender here. We're talking about the deep feminine intelligence, which is equally accessible, obviously, to men and to women. So what we've been doing is co-creating a coherent, pragmatic vision for how the world could be in 2030 if these feminine values were brought back into balance with the masculine and proposing strategies to realize this. We've had three large international meetings, one at the UN in July 2014, a launch in the Houses of Parliament in London in November 2014, and then a, uh, a wonderful meeting in the UN Library, co-hosted kindly by Maria Fernanda, uh, on International Day of Peace, September 21st, last year. And uh, just to quickly outline the three streams of our work, uh, one is Rama's work on women's visions, we, women's voices, because she, as you know, leads peace reconciliation missions to some of the uh, most desperate war and conflict zones of the planet, working with inspiring locally-led initiatives in Palestine, India, Turkey, 
Lebanon and many other countries. And she brings back her experiences to make them live for people who can't actually go there. And we're gonna hear more about that in a minute. Secondly, we have a whole learning and development program. Because what we've realized or in 30 or 40 years of work in the world is that many of the people who set out to save the world actually cause chaos because they haven't yet come to terms with their own anger and their own fear that drives them. And when that is not understood, it can cause chaos in international NGOs. And many of us have witnessed that at first hand. So the uh, education programs that we offer in Rising Women, Rising World are called Inner Action. In other words, to provide people with the inner knowledge, the inner power, to ensure that the actions they take to build a better world are actually effective. And there are two programs. One is a two-day introduction, and the other is a five-day facilitator's training. And already, in a very short time, we have already have 35 trained facilitators delivering these programs throughout the world. And thirdly, I come to what I hope will be the next slide, thanks to Martha, uh, which will show you the different 12 constellations that Rising Women, Rising World has established. And this is by, it's a little bit further down, Martha. Yeah. Go down. There we go. Uh, you will see, if you can read it that far away, that we've established one woman leading a constellation in 12 different fields, and these are women like Pauline Tanjura, who leads the constellation on indigenous wisdom. Women like Elizabeth Sartoris, who leads the constellation on ecology and environment. Uh, women economists, women educationalists like Meenakshi Gopina from New Delhi. Women carefully chosen for the depth of their experience and the breadth of the effect that they have had in their particular area. These women are gathering around themselves 12 mentorees. In other words, younger men and women who are already starting their own projects in that field. Uh, be it in peace and security, which is the constellation I'm responsible for. So I've gathered around me 12 women and men who are already beginning to grow an initiative on the ground in peace and security. And I can help them, I can link them up with others, I can give them encouragement, and in some cases help them to find funding. So these 12 women, each of them gathering 12 around them, will then encourage those 12 to do the same. In other words, these mentorees will then become mentors. They will gather another 12 around them. And thus, the inner and outer knowledge will spread, is already spreading exponentially. So, one of the great leaders of our constellations is sitting right here, Thais Koral, mm -hmm. who leads our constellation on food, agriculture, and water. So, I'm going to hand over to Thais now. You have to use this, okay. Thank you, Sila. And, um, and uh, just by sitting here, you know, and talking about uh, the image of the constellations, you know, it, uh, it uh, kind of uh, moved me back uh, to the constellation that, uh, that was my first entry in this big global women's movement, which was that organization back in, in 1990, you know, which was we do the Women Environment and Development Organization created by first by Bella, which was this, this incredible power force that would galvanize, uh, I mean, around her with all of us. All I was the youngest at that time, but people like Vangari, like Vandana, like uh, so many of the pioneers of that time, you know? And, uh, and we have created, uh, uh, already back there to influence the UN process, the UN Conference on Environment and Development, that uh, Women's Action Agenda 21 that had 14 points and so much of the work of the, 
the, the World Future Council reminds me of what we do have done at those times, no? with uh, just uh, breaking ground into a world that was not prepared uh, necessarily to see women as part of a vision for a new civilization, no? because we, we actually, that was the, the moment in which we step out of that, uh, that let's say, that, uh, that world of women, which was like uh, our body, ourselves, and violence against women, which is still very important issues, but we break through into talking about all issues, no? and we kind of, uh, have been very successful. We created like the, 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 the we from a nothing in the documents of this important conference, which was the UN Conference on Environment and Development. We kind of uh, end up with 183 recommendations, and uh, and the biggest event at the UN Forum that uh, nothing was nothing was like uh, that forum. I, I haven't uh, been in other conference. There was nothing with the vibrancy because it was the moment in which we really believed that there was a change in the world. You know? but, uh, but, uh, but that idea of constellation, I think it's so close to the women, to the world of women. You know? Because one of the things that uh, over the years, and being started by being a feminist, that I saw, you know, is that uh, I think the big challenge is really to be inclusive, no? I mean, we don't, uh, it's so difficult to be inclusive because, I mean, being inclusive means that you have to accommodate, you have to find a way that that person that is different. But I think this is a particular ability that w women have, you know, starting by a home, you arrive in a home, and uh, if the home has a host, she will see if you need something and she will bring you in, no? And I think this is what the world needs today, how you can bring people in, you know? And this is over the years and seeing what uh, we fought so much for quotas, for spaces for women. But what I've seen is that so much you kind of step into these places of leadership of power and we immediately are caught in that uh, what uh, what Maria Fernanda was called, uh, calling the status quo, and you start cutting down, no? because you don't have fun, you don't have a chair, you have to kind of create a this and that and that, and you start uh, kind of being completely shrinked in those spaces that were created. No? So what I've been trying in my, almost in my late mature age, is to try to find spaces in which uh, those constraints even if they are small, they are not so powerful, but those constraints will not determine the culture of the place and how we, we kind of live. And so when we say that I am the leader of, a, of that constellation, I think what uh, in, this, in these experiences that we have been having in New Zealand, the people that I am relating to in the world, what we try to capture is how these cultures of nurturing, but also of inclusiveness of uh, animals, or people, or people of different ages, of, uh, are part of the, 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 the work we do. You know, even if we don't achieve so much in terms of, uh, I don't know, the incredible outcomes, but, uh, but that culture, what I have uh, seen, is that that is the really, that has a very, new seed, because people get to this place and they don't want to leave, you know? That's what they say to me, and sometimes I say, but what did you find it? That is, that, that is, that is underlined in how we are in that space and what we do and what we invite everybody to do, you know? So this is what I've been trying to do in this constellation, kind of recall. This is the culture from where we distill and we, we start to name it as a narrative so we can replicate it in other places and can value as well as women, but as men, as everybody, because this is, I think, what we need. Everybody wants to be part of something that has value, and our role as leaders, as women, is to fight for that opportunity for everyone. so much to all three of you as I've lost my voice very slightly, despite the fact that I've lost my voice over these three last days of beautiful meetings, I do want to bring a few of the voices of women from around the world 
who are doing exactly what Maria Fernanda laid out to us, changing the paradigm of power, changing the paradigm of politics. Because what women are doing is that 100 years ago, women broke the veil of silence and said, no, no to the silencing of our voices, no to the silencing of our minds, no to exclusion and exploitation. But women didn't just say no, women said yes. Yes to the values we believe in. Yes to the principles, the ethics, the life, the earth we care for. Women began to work together with each other and with men who respected them to change the paradigm of politics for us and for future generations. We are the indigenous grandmothers of Peru in America Latina. Those dictators, they tried to destroy our culture. They stole our children. They tortured them. They threw them in the sea. But we are replacing their culture of impunity with our culture of accountability. Their military might will never erase our memories and our traditions. We are the mothers of Palestine. We are from the villages spread around Palestine. None of us has an MBA, but all of us are members of the Palestinian Business Women's Association. We are creating the economy of the future. We are saying no to their economy of colonization and domination. And we are building our economy of cooperation and solidarity. We create beautiful things with our hands, with the small pieces of land we have left. Healthy things, tasty things that we need. And we support each other to change the paradigm of exploitation into the paradigm of cooperation. We are the children of whom? Of Mother Earth. We are from the Green Belt Movement in Kenya, founded by Wangari Muta Matai. Those businessmen and politicians try to exploit us and destroy the Earth. But we are regenerating what they are destroying. We are changing their paradigm of exploitation and devastation with our paradigm of regeneration of our nature and ourselves. We are the youth of Syria. We are refugees now. But we didn't become refugees to flee our country and find safety and luxury in Europe. We fought peacefully for freedom and justice. We were imprisoned, we were tortured, but still we stayed together to fulfill our goal. We protected each other wherever we could. We are showing that even though we have been exiled, we are still united and we believe that as soon as we can, we will return to Syria to pursue our goal of freedom and equality for everyone. We are changing their paradigm of divide and destroy to our paradigm of unite.
नमस्ते वी आर देर सिस्टर्स फ्रॉम मुंबई नो 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 नॉट फ्रॉम बॉलीवुड वी आर फ्रॉम द स्लम्स जस्ट लाइक देम we also were very silent for many years while we were being exploited and raped and beaten by our own men but then like our sisters we learnt power is not in dominating others power lies within ourselves we discovered alone we can do nothing but together there is nothing we cannot do that is why we are changing the politics of power which is only love of power and we are changing it to the power of our love so we say to you all rise up sisters wherever you are let us join hands and create a new paradigm of power let us join hands with our men who respect us and honor us and let us join hands with our youth because they know how to lead the way forward thank you namaste